talking. Joining us now is a man who spends his time listening, and he would be Dr. Frank Luntz. He's the author of a new book, What Americans Really Want, Really. Welcome aboard, buddy. Good to have uh, an erudite member of the group up here now, huh? Wow, can you actually spell erudite? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> but I don't want to waste time doing yeah. that, though. Okay, good, good to have you here. Thank hey, you. look, here, Frank pioneered the instant response focus group. So we ask him here to test some NFL players and coaches. And after sorting through numerous sound bites, we've come up with some examples of good and bad communication. Now, we call it the truth meter because the lines don't lie. The higher that they climb, the more favorable the reaction. We've got people anywhere from 30 to 200 people turning dials at the same time. The red line represents fans. The green line represents spectators. If you get above a 70, it's an absolute communication home run. Above 70. Touchdown. All right, with that in mind, let's start with the 49ers head coach, Mike Singletary, who was talking about refocusing his squad after its recent tailspin. Give a listen to this. We're going to come back, we're going to look at the film, we're going to come out Wednesday, and we're going to go to work. And we're going to win enough football games to go to the playoffs. It's as simple as that. That's our, that's our attitude. That's the only attitude that we're going to have. We don't have time to be thinking about all the other stuff or what other people are talking about or they're writing about. All we know is we have a good football team. We're young, a little bit immature. Um, but... Um, we're going to come back and do the things that we need to do going forward, and we're just going to keep working. That's it. We're young. We're a bit immature. Mm -hmm. He's candid. He's mm -hmm. honest. He's acknowledging the weaknesses. But then he says, we're going to go to work. It's as simple as that. No messing around. This could be his gubernatorial announcement speech. It's that good. So folks read that kind of honesty and candor in him. It's one of the first rules of communication. Tell the truth. Mm -hmm. And if something's weak, admit it. Even though we didn't make eye contact, because normally they say, okay, make eye contact. The people that was asking the question, the reporters, he never made eye contact. Basically, he was looking down the whole time as he expressed those views. And there's no reason for him to be looking down because he's not reading anything. It's a right. simple question. It, it, one of the things that, that both coaches and, and players do not do enough of is they don't nod. They don't acknowledge the question, and they don't look the person straight in the eye. Because sometimes reporters ask dumb questions. <laughs> <laughs> Dan also oh, said sometimes you've got to lie to the <laughs> players to get them fired up. <laughs> All right, you know what? Cleveland head coach Eric Mangini explaining what his squad needs to do to improve. Give a, a little preview on that. Yes, this is communication by thesaurus. And, mm. and I want you to take a look at it and you'll see what I mean. All right. What are you hoping to get each week? Can you elaborate on that? Aggressive, intense, tough, physical. Um, finishing, uh, being able to respond to uh, a successful play that our opponent has and come out and create a successful play ourselves, uh, decency, uh, execution, communication, good, solid, sound, fundamental, fundamental, tough football, physical football, intense football. That's what I want every week. That's what I want every single week. Frank, yeah, he looks he, really happy. He, he, he's he's, he's delineating a long list no, no, there. Hold on, he only needs three things. What? A noun, a verb, and some sort of punctuation. <laughs> <Exactly. laughs> I mean, it's, it's, I, I really got the feeling like maybe he learned English as a second language. You know, it's kind of interesting. But they though. liked it, yeah, though. Yes, that, yes. They liked it. Obviously, there were no Cleveland Brown fans on that yeah. panel. <laughs> well, because it was plain and simple, and you got it. But he could still be better. He could still be more expressive. The only people haven't got it is his team. I mean, that's just, I mean, they just need, I mean, uh, honestly, that's what need to find him favorable, right? Yeah. But, but the thing is, he's not trying to speak to the team in, in these moments. He's trying to speak to the fans, to the greater audience. Okay. And all that I would recommend there is add a little more humanity to it, not just the words, a little more of the heart. <laughs> you smile, man. We have, we have, we we have no that. football coaches. Humanity and football coaches. <laughs> we we have more time to get boomer starts. All right. After <laughs> Dallas knocked off Philadelphia last humanity. week, Cowboy quarterback Tony Romo addressed the importance of that particular game. Yes, and honesty is always the best policy, <laughs> and fake candor and fake humility does horribly. Give it a listen. But sometimes it works. Is this a big game? I don't, I don't know. We'll find out, I'm sure, this week. I, th I think um, it was important for us because the team that we played against has been successful this year, and it's in our division. And it's important because when it's all said and done, at the end of the year, I'm sure there will be lobbying for position. So, in that sense, this was important. Um, we can't control what other teams do. We can only control what, what we can um, control on our end. So, 
we go out there and try and win each week, and we'll see where the chips fall. They'll be lobbying for position. Lobbying? What is lobbying in football? <laughs> I thought he did pretty good there. Well, let me ask you a question. Does you and I don't agree on anything at this point. <laughs> and, and, I'm, and I'm not going to beat up on, uh, on the media, by the way. Here's the problem. He, first off, he wasn't candid. It was okay. an important game. If you're facing someone from your conference, from your division, you better win that game. Mm -hmm. And there's nothing that he said there to bring fans in. This is a guy that someday is going to make a lot of money in endorsements, but he needs to fix that language. Why, from what you've seen, do you think that? Because he, he's the uh, quarterback for the Cowboys. Yes, plain and simple. Plain and simple, and he's well-known, and he dates famous people and all that. But man, if that's how he courts mm -hmm. his women, mm -hmm. Frank, <laughs> maybe he has it. Frank, just let me ask you a question. But how much does believability and likability play in these ratings going up or down? It, it's it's essential. And in fact, you really hit it. If we like the person, and we try, I wouldn't use the word believability, I use the word trust. Okay. If we trust them, then no matter what they're saying, we're already going to regard them positively. But even if you trust them, bad language still is bad language. All right, let me move on to the next clip now. It involves Bills receiver Terrell Owens, T.O., oh who was held without a reception for the first time in 185 games. Right. Speaking of bad language, mm -hmm. this is the worst. Mm. Let's take All a look. All right. Just going with the plays that are called. Was it covers that they were doing out there? What do you think? You tell me you're out there. I, as I said, we're just going with the plays that are called. Your frustration level right now. I'm good. Just got to get ready for next week. Joe, are you and Lee being wasted in this offense? We're just going with the plays that are called. You could say no right there and say that. I'm just going with the plays that are called. Do you like the plays that are called? Whether I like them or don't, I'm just going with the plays that are called. This one's too easy, but I'm not going to go with the little joke. I'm going to okay. go something. Millions of young people look to these football players as role models. Millions of them will dress like they do and will speak like they do. Lose the sunglasses. Lose the hat. Take it seriously. How about the earring? Give people... Well, I'll let you decide that. <laughs> Give people, that may work in San Francisco. Give people a reason to respect you and to want to be like you. I was not as angry at the language, which was awful, because you can repeat yourself as much as you want, and it still doesn't work. I was more angry that he didn't, he wasn't serious, he wasn't passionate, he wasn't honest. And what does that say to a 9 or 10 year old football fan? I don't want them to be like that. Well, the thing about him is you could tell that he was hiding something, that he did not want to answer the question honestly. So therefore, immediately, his trustworthiness, right, was obviously going down from the listener and, standpoint. And plus the fact, Frank, is that we've seen him in the past, when he hadn't gotten the football, he responded so negatively. Now, all of a sudden, he doesn't catch a pass, his streak gets snapped, and all of a sudden, he's okay with it. He's like, okay, wait, the play is the call. And how about body language, Frank? Do you, does that factor into it as well? It factors into it tremendously. And, and when you lean forward towards the camera, it means that you really believe in it. If you guys are leaning back, it means that you have less trust in it. He didn't believe in anything he said. Exactly. You, know you know what? I really wanted to ask you about us, but these guys kept asking questions because they knew <laughs> you were going to be candid about us. Back with more after this. <laughs>